Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Faced with four wines made from four different grape varieties, um, three different countries, um, and have I got them in the right order? I ummed and ahed over the order to do this. Should I do them in uh, uh, in date order? Should I do them in alcohol order? Uh, in the uh, as it is, I've got a mixture of the two. Um, so we're starting with two wines from uh, a, an estate called Mas Bel U. Uh, in, which is in the Languedoc, and it's the um, it's the estate of uh, the Axa Millezine Group, the people who own Quinta de Noval, uh, Pichon Baron, Domaine de Lalo, and uh, uh, and various other things. There, they've got is it Disnoco in Tokai? Uh, if it isn't, I'll probably get shot by uh, Christian Seely. But um, there are there are far worse people to be shot by. Anyway, um, so this is the first one we've got is a 2009 Mourvedre. Uh, reason I put this first, it's it's the lowest alcohol, uh, even though the next one is a year younger. But anyway, let's dig in. Now, Mourvedre can be a little bit sulky, but uh, here I get um, quite, a, quite a lot of fruit coming out. Um, there's the uh, plums, the damsons, uh, maybe a bit of dark berry, and it's those on the slightly drying out, cooked side. Um, I don't get any of the... Um, uh, the, the, there's some of the meaty character that I associate with Mourvedre, but I don't get any of the uh, really awkward sort of sulky, uh, sulky sullenness that uh, the, 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 the grape can have. Feels like it's going to be quite rich. Um, maybe uh, a little bit more freshness would be welcome, or am I wrong? Let's try it. And I, when, you, when I come to taste it, I do get uh, some of that uh, uh, slightly over-mature fruit character. It's uh, showing itself in a slight jamminess and um, some of that dried fruit um, uh, personality. Uh, there's some herbs in there, there's some spice in there, uh, but uh, maybe not quite enough of them. I want a little bit more wildness. It almost feels a little bit too, too correct. Um, and uh, so I like it, but um, I'm not jumping up and down at the moment. If I were to jump up and down on a white settee drinking red wine, my wife would tell me off. Um, anyway, uh, wine number two. Again, Masbello. Uh, this is their 2010 Carignan. Van de Pé de Coe. I have no idea where Coe is. First one was Van de Pé Doc. Uh, this is Van de Pé de Coe, C-A-U-X. This also smells a little bit meaty. Um, uh, and fruit-wise, uh, there's uh, juicy... Uh, I'd say the plums and the blackberries are, are, are the main thing here. Uh, it does feel like it's got a little bit more sense of the herbs and spice of the soil coming through. It smells okay. And that for me is a step up. Uh, it seems to speak more of a place um, and the fruit is ripe but it's, it hasn't got that slightly jammier edge uh, of the, um, uh, the Mourvedre despite the uh, half a degree higher in alcohol. Um, and Carignan by itself uh, can be a, a difficult act to get right because if you pick it too early it's a bit angular and if you pick it too late it goes a bit too raisiny. Here I think they've got it absolutely spot on. Uh, so uh, there is some freshness, uh, and um, there is this. Um, I got, what I, how do I think? How do I think of it? It's almost like a stony, um, uh, slightly slaty character uh, that comes through uh, to uh, to give some structure to the wine. Uh, there is some tannin there, and there's, some, there's certainly the acidity, but there's this slaty edge of minerality. Uh, so for me, quite a step up, um, and uh, yeah, better wine. And I'm fully prepared to see these wines in two years' time and find myself prefer preferring the Mourvedre. Uh, if you never get confounded by wine, then you, never, you don't taste enough of it. Um, wine number three. We are heading to the Southern Hemisphere, to uh, Western Australia, uh, for Lewin Estates Art Series uh, Shiraz from uh, Margaret River, 2009 Vintage Thereof. Number of things here. Um, first of all, I get a framework of oak. There's uh, quite a, um, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if it were French oak. There, there, there feels to be like a, a slightly um, stern, uh, ever so slightly smoky um, oak uh, character that's giving um, a framework to the fruit. And the fruit, um, it's got this uh, just very getting very close to boiled sweet, but still on the right side of that. Um, black currants, blackberries, a little bit of plum and spice. But uh, as with some of the Margaret River Cabernets, a touch of mint going through here. Is it mint? Is it eucalyptus? Well, I'm very happy to... Uh, uh, to... No, I'm not, I wouldn't be very happy to go to a mint versus eucalyptus seminar. I'm sure it would be fascinating. Uh, but um, anyway, uh, that's what I get. It smells like it's going to be uh, confident, uh, but it feels like it's going to be young. And there's a juicy, sweet, supple confidence about the fruit. doesn't feel hugely complex um, at the moment, but... Um, then that oak uh, comes in, gives it a bit of framework, 
Um, maybe the fruit is just that little bit too sweet, if I have a, a, a criticism of it. Um, the start, if I were to compare it with other Australian wines, it reminds me of some of the Central Victoria ones. Not so much Heathcote, but more uh, more on the Great Western, uh, th th those, those places around, uh, um, around where Best's and, and people like that. Uh, there is a, a mixture of freshness and sweetness with this herby mint character coming in there. Uh, I like it, and um, but I would have liked to see, yeah, maybe just a little bit earlier picking. I don't know. I'm, I hate to tell winemakers what to do. Actually, I love to tell winemakers what to do, and uh, I love it when they say, well, you're wrong. This is my job. I can do it better than you, uh, and you can write better than me. Uh, hopefully I can, but uh, hopefully I can talk better than them as well. But uh, anyway, I better have another slud and shut up. But, um, good rather than great. I think I prefer the um, Masbello Cabernet. Let's see whether uh, the Ed Meads um, Zinfandel from Mendocino County, 2009 vintage, uh, can trump a lot of them. Well, I left this till last because it's 15.5% alcohol and it really does jump out of the glass and say, hello, hello, here I am. I'm brambly, I'm friendly, I'm a bit spicy, and I might be a touch overripe, but I've still got a slight uh, underripe freshness. Because at Zinfandel, um, if you get a bunch of Zinfandel at harvest time, uh, there are some grapes that are perfectly ripe, there are some that are overripe, and there are some that are uh, slightly underripe. So uh, some people try and pick their, their fruit really late to get rid of all those underripe grapes. But I think, uh, for me, part of the charm of good Zinfandel is having some of those underripe ones, giving a little bit of stalky freshness to the ever so slightly jammy edge of the overripe fruit. Here, it feels like they've got it in pretty reasonable bal balance. Smoky, plummy, big, juicy raspberries. Um, I don't know whether that, that smokiness is to do with um, the fruit or the oak. I, I, I don't, I'm not sure, quite sure what they've, um, whether it's been in a barrel or not, but I, I would say it had. Um, but um, it, it, it achieves the what zin, good zin should do. It's got the uh, j really lovely, juicy, upfront, friendly fruit, um, but it's still got that, some of that freshness at the back. And um, uh, it, it's not a wine that I really want to go out and drink heaps and heaps of, uh, but, um, but a, a, certainly a glass or two, uh, because it has got that refreshing side, despite the 15.5% alcohol, uh, I think that would be rather attractive. Only problem is, it's, uh, it's a storm outside at the moment, and uh, um, I'd love to be able to fire up a barbecue and uh, grill something and, uh, and uh, have a glass of that alongside it, but uh, I think I'll be inside with stew. In which case, tonight, I will probably uh, be resorting to uh, the Masbello Carignan, but uh, those two are my favourite. Um, in a nice set of wines. See you soon.